I'm Sensei J for the Vidyu YouTube channel. In this video, I'm showing the basics of adding texture materials to an object in Blender. Before I begin, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on everything you need to know. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And now, on with the tutorial. So in Blender, I'm going to start by adding a cube, and we're going to talk about how a texture actually gets wrapped around the object, or more precisely, is projected onto the faces of the cube. So the first thing that we need to know is that you have different ways of viewing the cube or the object, and these are the icons for them. They are called viewport shading, and this is the wireframe version of that. This is the solid version, solid view. And then this is the material preview display. And right now there's not a material on there, so you don't see anything, but that's the one that we're going to use. This last one, by the way, is the rendered display, which includes all the lights and everything like that, which we're not going to use either. So let's talk about how this actually is mapped to the object itself. I am going to go to the UV editing workspace, which is right here. And this kind of gives you a clue as to what happens. Imagine if you were to take this cube, imagine if it was made out of cardboard, for example, and you were to cut around the edges of it and were to basically sort of unfold it and then place the unfolded pieces flat on a table. That is basically what happens when you unwrap an object for texturing. So now I can put a picture here, and then that picture, the pieces of it, would end up being projected to the different faces of the cube. Speaking of faces, when you're in edit mode, you have the ability to select individual vertices or individual edges or individual faces and that way i can select the different faces and as i do that you can see over here in the uv editing window that those faces are being displayed here and if i select all of them then you can see they're all being displayed if i use my selection tool and select those then i can go ahead and manipulate those just like i would an object so if I hit the G key for grab, I can move that around. If I hit the R key for rotate, I can rotate those around. And if I hit the S key for scale, I can scale that as well. So let's go ahead and add an image here. I'm going to come up here and select open image. After navigating to the folder that contains the image that I want, I'm going to go ahead and select that. And this happens to be my favorite video boss, Lakes 05. So here is the image laid over the top of the faces of the cube. If I come over here and I use my mouse wheel to roll across, I can go ahead and select the material preview display. And you'll notice that despite the fact that this picture is here, it has not been mapped to the cube itself. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to the shading workspace, and this shows the cube and what has been actually shaded and what has actually been attached to that cube. Right now, there is nothing that has been attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and select Add a New Material. Now you can see that we have a couple of different nodes here that have been added to the material.001. Before I do anything with that, I'm going to go ahead and just rename this Lakes05 material. And by the way, if you look up here, you can see here's the cube. And the cube is actually the mesh cube.001. And if you open it up, you can now see that the Lake So5 material has been attached to that cube. Also, if I were to go to the material tab right here, you can see that this is all here as well. Okay. This is the material output that goes into this object. And then we have what is called a principled BSDF. BSDF stands for Bidirectional Scattering Distribution Function. 
we don't have to really worry about what that all means. Okay? And this has been plugged into the material output for the cube. All right. Now, these all of these things here are very, very important. OK, but we're only going to talk about one, and that's the base color itself. And right now the base color is white. But if I click on this, I can go ahead and actually change that color to whatever I want. It's not going to matter because we're not going to end up using this as the input. Instead, we're going to connect something to the node here that will pass through the principal BSDF and into the cube. And to do that, I'm going to select Add Texture. Now, I can add any one of these textures. For example, if I were to add a brick texture and connect that in, then you can see that I have this very nice brick texture attached to that. But a brick texture is not what we're looking for, so I'm going to add an image texture instead. And then I will plug this in, and I can open up my image texture right here, but since I've already opened it up in the UV editing workspace, I'm just going to select it from the drop down menu, which is right here. And now you can see that it has been attached to the cube itself. Going back to the UV editing workspace, now this actually matches that. And again, like I said before, if I select all of these, I can use the G key and grab and move that. And you can see that it's moving on the cube itself. I can use the R key for rotate and I can rotate that around and notice that it is rotating in real life time on the cube itself. And I can also use the S key to scale this and notice that it is being scaled in real life time on the cube itself. Let's go back to the layout window and I still have this viewport shading selected as material preview display. And you can see that the cube looks very, very good. But what happens if I decide to rescale this cube? For example, let's say I were to adjust the X axis scale up. You can see that what's happening is, is that the texture is actually stretching across there. Let me make that about five, okay? And so this looks really good, but this looks really stretched, okay? And the reason for that is because Blender is assuming that you still want to use the exact same layout for the UV editing picture that we had before. And so this face is correct, but this one is still this, even though it's five times longer, it's just using these pixels of the picture. So we will need to re-unwrap this correctly. To do this, we will need to essentially normalize the new scale of this object. So I'm going to go back to the layout workspace, and then I want basically to tell Blender that these should all be one again, right? To do that, I'm going to select Object, Apply, and I'm going to apply this scale as being normal. And when I click that, now all of these are ones, which means this is the actual scale that I want it to be. So now if I go back into UV Editing and I select all the faces, I can re-unwrap this and the scales will be correct. To re-unwrap it, I'm going to select UV, Smart UV Project, and then click OK. And now you can see that it has correctly applied those four faces along with the two end faces. And everything is now correctly displayed on the cube. Let's start over and do something a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new cube object. And then I'm going to just real quickly model a picture frame that I can put a picture inside of. So I think I will make this about 0.1. And then I will shift from object mode into edit mode. And I will select face mode. Grabbing this face, I'm going to hit the I key and just inset that a little bit. 
I'll hit the E key and extrude it back just a little bit. So now I have this really nice little picture frame that I can put a picture inside of. Let me go ahead and switch this to display preview. Now, if I go back over to the UV editing and I select all the faces, you can see that it has sort of adjusted this, but it's not perfect. Okay. For example, if I select this back face and I select this side face and this top face, you can see that it still thinks all three of those are correct, but they're not. So we're going to have to renormalize this just like we did before. Also, this looks actually pretty good, but this is literally just an edge. It doesn't have any volume in the plane itself because it was extruded back. So to fix this, we're going to do what we did before, which is we're going to go back to the layout and we're going to make all of everything correct. So I'm going to say object apply and I'm just going to apply all transforms like this so now it's all correct then I can go back to UV editing I will select all the faces and then UV smart UV project and select OK and now you can see that everything has been unwrapped correctly and if I select some faces you'll see that this is the face right here where I want to put the picture and then Everything else on here is actually the picture frame itself, which I want to put some wood there. So what I want to do is be able to create my custom made texture map for this picture frame object. So to do that, I'm going to start by exporting this as a template. I will select UV and then export UV layout. After navigating to the folder where I want to put it, I'm just going to call this template. And then I will select export UV layout. If I bring this in, you can see that I have my template, I have my picture, and I also have put a wood texture in here that I can use for this as well. So what I'm going to do now is bring up my favorite image editing application. You can use whatever one you want. If you like Photoshop, go ahead and use Photoshop. If you like GIMP, it's a free alternative to Photoshop, or you can use Microsoft Paint. In my case, I'm going to use HitFilm, and I'm using HitFilm because it's what I'm used to. So I'm going to actually create the template here, and you can see this is the layout that we had before, and this is where I want the picture to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag my Lake So5 picture and drop it in here. And then I will rescale it and place it exactly where I want it to be. And now that I've done that, I can go ahead and just take my wood texture and drop it behind there. Okay. Now I'm kind of looking at this wood texture and everything is mostly going up and down here. So I think I'm going to rotate that wood texture 90 degrees. And also, because I can, I want to add a few things. I want the wood grain to be a little bit tighter. And in fact, I think I'll tighten it up a little bit more. I'm just going to add a real quick tile effect to it. I think I'll make that about there just to make the wood grain a little bit more narrow. And then also I'm going to add a little bit of a brightness and contrast. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so now I have created my actual custom made texture for the picture frame object that I had in Blender. So what I'm going to do is turn off the template so that I just have the picture itself. And then I'm going to export this out into its own picture. And I have renamed it Material Texture. So now I can go ahead and bring back up Blender. In Blender, I need to go ahead and open it up and put it right here into this area. So I will select Open, and I will navigate to the folder and open the image. And that looks really, really good, right? So now let's go ahead and attach it to our picture by selecting Shading. And again, I need to create a new material. I think I will just call this picture texture, but I can call it whatever I want. And then I'm going to bring in that image. Now, last time I opened it using the add image texture, but 
I can actually just drag it in and drop it there too. So that makes it super easy to do. And then all I have to do is just plug it into the base color. And now looking at this, we realize ah, we got a couple of problems. The first problem is, is that the picture is upside down. So obviously when Blender unwrapped this, it unwrapped it upside down. Also, you'll see that the texture of the wood goes this way and it goes this way. And I like that, but it's also going this way up here and also down here. And I would really like for the texture to go the other way on those two sections. So back in UV editing, I'm going to go ahead and select the face only. And like I said before, if I grab this, I can use the R key and just rotate this around. Okay. Here, wait a minute. Let me show that picture. Now, if I use the R key, I can rotate this around to be what I want. Now I could try to eyeball that, but I'm going to make it precise. And the way I do that is by actually keying in 180 into my keyboard and then I'll hit enter. So that literally rotated it exactly 180 degrees. Okay. All right. Now let's select this face and you can see it's going sideways, but I really want it to go up and down. If I hold the shift key down, I can select that face and I will have both of those. Now I can grab those and I can hit the R key and then I'll just type in 90 and it will rotate those both 90 degrees. And so now you can see how that is correct this way and that way. And if I come back out here, oh, it looks so good. It looks beautiful. And that is the basics of how to apply textures to an object in Blender. I'm Sensei J for a video. Please feel free to leave a comment about your thoughts on this topic and be part of the conversation. Also, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel, ringing the notification bell for all the latest news and information that you need to know. Thanks for watching.